let's test some gears. Hey guys, Jacques here. So in order to improve my watch, I uh, wanted to test uh, which gears are the most efficient. Is it involute? Is it cycloid? Is it something else? So I did some experiment. So I made this test jig to test gears under pressure. There's two pulleys on each, on a pinion on the gear with a weight so I can put the load on the gears and then with one of those scales, spring scales, I can measure how much force I need to apply to get those gears moving. So what did I find? There's something special about clocks is that in most cases a big gear drives a small pinion like this. In most applications it's the opposite. You have a small motor that runs fast and then the speed is reduced. So in this case I choose a ratio of 1 to 6. I use 12 teeth for the pinion. Smaller than 12 is even more challenging, but so 12 to start, 72. It's a uh, module 1.6 because 1.6 is what fitted with the pin pinion that I'm trying here. Pin pinion works just with the same cycloid gear, the big gear here. So th with this gear. I could try the pin pinion and the cycloid pinion. So what does those gear look like in close up? So this is a animation in FreeCAD. Here I'm showing the pin pinion. And then with the same gear the cycloid pinion. You can see the leaves of the pinion of a narrow rounded edge. The point, the point of the gear is what drives the pinion on the leaves. The profile for those gears can be found in this, in this document. I'm putting the link below. Technically the profile is the English standard. At the end of that document there's also a link to another article about involute gears in clockwork. Here's the animation of the involute gears. And then there's a little specific things about involute is the undercut option. Undercut you can see the difference here. But really again the, that undercut heights made that's for when the pinion is driving the gear. Ideally it might be best to have the undercut on the for clockwork it might be best to have the undercut on the ring gear so that's might be something else to try. Let's do some measurement and see how they compare. I'm just going to try with this weight that's point three point five kilos. It's actually the weight I'm using on the the grasshopper clock here. So with this pulley at the bottom, it spreads the load. It puts an even load on both gears on the teeth by pulling on the string. I just see how much force I need to get the gears moving. Then with my scale, I can measure so uh, then I, I will be able so then I can compare the different gears. So this one it's about 200 that's about 250 grams to move and then the other thing to realize is it moves it jumps a couple steps 
but it moves actually one teeth at a time. So imagine a clock, depending on where it stops, the force is going to be different if it's the hot spot or the easier spot, depending on where it stops. About 200 grams with the pin pinion and the cycloid gear. So now I have the cycloid pinion this profile in FreeCAD. So let's test that one. Cycloid test. 450, 450 grams. 500, 300, 500. That pin pinion was needed half the force to move. If I do a close up, see how it moves. Once teeth at a time. That's not very good for the continuous operation of a clock. You have a clock ticking and suddenly it stops for unknown reason. Imagine if every pair of gears just happened to be at the hot spot at the same time, then it's going to stop the, the clock. So now let's start, <laughs> let's try the involute. And like I said, the involute, it's not going to be perfect because the undercut is on the pinion. Whereas in this case, since the wheel drives the pinion, I would like to have the undercut on the big gear. But that will be another test, another day. Okay, let's change those gears. All the gears are on bearings, so it's really about seeing the friction in the gears more than anywhere else. That doesn't <laughs> sound too good. So, how much force? 600. Uh, 550. Pinion driving the ring gear much smaller. 500, 300, 6, 7. <sighs> so, yeah, involute is worse than cycloid. But the best is still this one. And I kind of had the feeling because the steel pin really polished and hard against PLA is probably better than PLA against PLA. Anyway, that was quite interesting for a start. Probably some improvement that can be made with better profile. It's quite possible that a bigger pinion will be much better if more than one teeth of the pinion engage on the ring. It might be better because there's not that hot spot that has to go every gear. So a lot, lot more investigation to do. By just pulling by hand it's really hard to go just one teeth at a time. That was a very interesting experience realizing how much those hot spots are. One thing I realize is between the the drum and the second arbor it's probably really good to have a big pinion. Probably 16 teeth would be better and 
possibly more stage with bigger pinions might be make a better clock. My very first clock had just eight teeth, eight, so just three stage with eight teeth pinion, but maybe four stage with 16 teeth pinion might be much better. So that's something eventually to try at some point. And I'll definitely try a clock with all pin pinion like this. And then for this one, which gear are the best? <laughs> for now it's cycloid and it seems to be working. When I just saw what I see here, I'm not sure in volume are so good. The next prototype of this one is in progress. Just here you can see the rewinding mechanism. The spring is hooked up here. There's a ratchet for the rewinding here. Thing. <laughs> New plates with one millimeter diameter holes. This that's getting challenging. I cannot just push a one millimeter long shaft like this. It bends. So I'm going to start doing some tools to <laughs> put up the watch together. Making a clock is easy. Making a watch it's another level. But if I can manage to do a okay watch I certainly will be able to do much better clocks. So I'll be coming. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.